All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This Honorable Cat Roan County Commissioner's Meeting of Roan County is now in session. The Honorable Judge, uh, Honorable Chairman Randy Ellis presiding. God bless these United States, great state of Tennessee in this honorable meeting. Uh, at this time, Pastor Brenda Poole from Swan Pond United Methodist will lead us in prayer. Afterwards, please remain standing for the pledge of the American flag. Pastor. Before I pray, a couple went to the Capitol and they ran into someone who was rushing down the hall. They asked the man who was leading them who that was and he said that it was the chaplain. And they asked him, well, does he pray for the Senate or for the congressman? And he said, oh, no. He never does that. He goes in and he looks around at all the politicians and then he prays for the people. <laughs> so I say, let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we come before you in thanksgiving for those who are called to care for our people of Rome County. We ask, Lord, that you always remind us to pray for our leaders, national, state, and local, as scripture tells us to do. We realize that our commissioners come from different parties, different life experiences, differing outlooks on what they feel needs to be done to move forward in helping the people of our county for the problems that are many and diverse. We ask your guidance and wisdom to lead them all to see beyond all personal differences, to see one another's hearts and ideas that good decisions may be made together for the ultimate good of your people in Rome County. We pray for the people of Rome County. As we said, the problems are many and diverse and answers are hard to come by. We ask you to bless the members of the families of our commissioners especially lifting up any who may be sick, especially our own Brenda Hendrickson from our church who has been dealing with cancer now for so long. We ask your healing power and strength to be upon them all. We ask, Lord, bless each one here that all that will be done will be pleasing to you, we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. If you have a cell phone, please silence it for the meeting. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bell? Present. Barrett? Here. Bowers? Here. Brashears? Here. East? Here. Ellis? Here. Gann? Here. Hendrickson? Here. Hester? Here. Hickman? Hooks? Here. Meadows? Here. Moore? Here. White? Here. Wilson? Here. 14 yes, one no. We have a quorum present. We move forward, uh, approve the minutes of the February 11th, 2019 meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Meadows, second by Commissioner Moore. Commissioner Meadows? Nothing to add. Commissioner Moore? Nothing Any more discussion from the commissioners? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The minutes are approved. Acceptance uh, committee reports and correspondence. Motion by Meadows. Second by Barry. Commissioner Meadows. Nothing to add. Commissioner Barry. Yes, sir. Uh, on report number three, 
the uh, Duncan County Environmental Review Board. Uh, we'll probably get, uh, I think we have two or three of these that, that uh, sort of talk, talk to each other, but I guess one um, on, uh, on the top of the third page is talking about the ball fields, and I'm sure we'll be talking uh, to some degree that we've got uh, some other reports and things on that one. I guess uh, uh, the fact that we now have maybe some additional information that that there's there's stuff under the ball fields and stuff now, uh, we may have to take an additional additional look at that. Uh, and uh, I guess and, and on next to the last page, Mr. Woody is talking about uh, the mercury uh, constituents. I guess we've got. We've got two or three reports regarding that tonight, too, don't we? on the mercury at the landfill and stuff. Um, and then under that, there was a, um, we have a, we have, we got plans, copies of a plan that says, and Brad Stevenson has copies of a plan. Can you give us some plans? Do you know if we have plans for which one is this? This was the last page here talking about the PDF. You're talking about the sampling plan. You're talking about the sampling plans for the. Uh, well, this was this was talking about the uh, the mercury, I think. On the, uh, but I think there's a, there's a couple reports on that tonight as well. Well, there's a there's a resolution, and then Dr. Timothy Joseph under my report, I will have him up okay. To, okay. to explain part of his uh, research. And then, and then under seven and eight, did, did, have we gotten a letter from the planning commission? In regards to the to that proposed building site on the, on the school at seven and eight, <coughs> refer to a letter. Seven. And, what page? Where are we on? Item number seven. Yeah, and eight, seven said the the planning commission would would get a letter. Uh, last but on on discussion item one. <coughs> then I think they met on the. 23rd decided that only the chairman would sign it. I just didn't know if we got the letter or not. You're talking about a letter from the planning commission regarding the site? So yes. Yes, we do have We have that. Okay. I think it was, I thought it was filed last month. But if not, I can go back. I think all we got is, are these reports. That's what I was looking okay. for. Okay. Okay. We'll get that. I'll, I'll, I'll double check that. Number 10 on the road committee, I noticed it says, uh, we asked about the structure bridge going into Crystal Cove. Mr. E said, we got, have we got a problem at, at the bridge? Oh, that bridge don't belong to the Rome County Road Department. Okay. It, it starts back on the gravel and runs the rest of the county road. Okay, so we don't we don't have to worry about the bridge then? No, that belongs to the homeowner. <coughs> Great. Good. Okay. Uh, number 11, Mr. Mr. Woody, that's a, that's a great report. Very, very concise and consolidated. Do we, do we have any clue how much it would cost for us to take care of all these deficiencies? Number 11, the property committee meeting? Yeah. As, we, as we go through that. Oh, as we go through that. Well, we, yeah, we put together, we put together annually the capital budget that addresses some of these issues. So it, it generally shows up in the capital budget because the capital budget not only showed the current year, we call it showed the next year, and then we go out 20 years. So that's, that's we good. show a lot of that in in that capital report. And we take good. some of our capital reports from this. Very good report. Uh, 13 and 26, we'll have a resolution on those tonight as well. And, and maybe the uh, executive or Mr. Woody and the budget director, maybe several will be talking about that later on on the, uh, uh, the ad hoc committee met. And so 13 and 16 will be there. Uh, again, on 14, uh, the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Sports and Recreation Committee, we just, and, and maybe Mr. Woody, I, I saw an email today, but from our committee, it looks like what's going to happen is, is those fields are going to be uh, not available to, to, uh, to the public uh, from, uh, for, for, this, for this soccer season. And, and and we can talk about it when we, I guess. I've, on, I've got it under my report. On your report that. because uh, we may have to look at on that on that third party stuff. But uh, just in case you get phone calls, just want to let you know that 
that uh, it looks like this year's going to be a wash uh, on the fields out there. No, no pun intended. No pun intended. No pun intended. And, and, and number 16, again, goes back to that uh, environmental management disposal facility. Uh, do we, and it keeps talking about mercury, I guess. So do, are we? There's a, there's a resolution on the commission that addresses the number and, of those. And I'm sure you, you've, you've probably attended some of those meetings, I guess, as well. And Commissioner Creasy, that letter, that's the commissioner in Anderson County, right? Yes. Uh, 21 again goes to that. That's that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any more questions or comments on the committee reports and correspondence? All in favor of approving, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Committee reports and correspondence have been accepted. Madam Clerk, do we have any notaries? Yes. Elizabeth Kane, Autumn Childs, <clears throat> Michaela L uh, Davidson, Tammy Goddard, Jeremy Hobbs, Elena Jolly, Kimberly Ramsey, Veronica Walker Ray, Connie Voiles, Rachel Wampler, <coughs> and Haley Wiggins. We have a motion to elect the uh, notaries as presented. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second, second by Commissioner Hood. Mr. Henderson, I just appreciate the effort to serve. Commissioner Hooks, appreciate their willing to serve. Any other questions or comments on the notaries? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Bell? Aye. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hickman? Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Yeah. Moore? Uh, White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14 yes. Notaries have been elected. At this time, this is the portion of our evening that we give the uh, audience and the citizens of Rome County the opportunity to address the commission. We ask that you step forward, state your name and address, be respectful of each other, and be respectful of the commissioners. And we ask you to limit your comment for th to three minutes. Anyone would like to address? Come step right ahead, sir, and state your name and address. Good evening. My name is Robert Kennedy. I live at 209 Whipperwill Drive in Oak Ridge. I'm chairman of the City of Oak Ridge's Environmental Quality Advisory Board, and I am one of your constituents. Specifically, Ms. Bowers. I um, come here tonight to talk about an item on your agenda rescinding the resolution of last October in regard to the EMDF. City of Council of Oak Ridge is completely in opposition to this new environmental facility. It's not an environmental facility, it's a waste dump. It's a toxic waste dump, radiological waste dump. It's got mercury in it. There was a big mercury fish kill last summer in East Fork Poplar Creek. So that stuff should not remain in Oak Ridge. It needs to go out west where there's no people, no water, no 60 inches of rainfall. You know, we had our highest rainfall ever, TVA ever recorded, last year. So. The uh, hydrologic assumptions that that waste dump is based on are not valid. The economics are not valid. Our boards looked at it. They're, they're not well founded. Um, we are opposed and we hope you rescind that resolution. Thank you for your time and uh, it's been a long time since I appeared before this body, but it's good to be here again. Thank you, sir. Right, sir. Anyone else like to address the commission? Hi, I'm Pam May. I'm with the Run Alliance. Um, and I know you guys have copies of the annual report, and I just want to touch on a few things. I hope you guys will read it. Uh, we're really proud of the report, and we used it this year kind of also as a reference about the Alliance and the things that we uh, have done, but also about the staff and how the Alliance is um, uh, made up and the partners and how it works. So hopefully that will 
uh, help answer some of the questions that's been out in the public lately. Uh, some of the high points from 2018. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, lowest unemployment since 2004 uh, in Roan County, and we were within 0.1% of the national average. We had an increase of 383 jobs in our industries uh, per our survey, and that was one of the largest net job growths uh, in the decade. Well, we had one prior to that, I think in 2009, and that was it. Uh, 143 Roan County graduates became Tennessee scholars, which was a new record. Um, we also organized the educators, educators in the workplace, organized the first day of our all teacher visits uh, which was in the state with every middle school teacher in Rome visiting five participating industries. And as far as we know, that's the only, we're the only uh, county that, that that occurred where all middle school teachers participated. Uh, we were awarded the seal of approval from the uh, American Association of Retirement Communities uh, saying that we are a great place to retire. And also, visitors spent um, nearly $70 million in 2017, um, and that's $2.33 million than, more than the previous year. Um, we have worked to help get the K-25 Overlook open, um, and it should be opening soon. We should have a ribbon cutting this spring. Uh, it's going to be triple in size and all new uh, interior uh, and designs and information, uh, including some recreational opportunities that's in the area. So. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I guess I need to put my name down. That's fine. We got you. Okay. <laughs> um, Mark Turpin, 210 Sportsman Club Road. Um, we've had a n number of problems on our road, not just this last rainfall, but this. Before that, we had a, a water blowout. They didn't fix it for like eight hours. It just ran down the mountainside. I called back the next morning. They said, oh, this is bad. And they came out. They looked at the road. They said, this is bad. We're going to fix this, fix this. And they repaved it. The, the road drops. The ditch settles. It pushes the mountainside out. My new neighbor over here, Ben Dermer, he's fresh out of the military, bought a house. I'm very proud of him. He said to me the other day, he goes, what have I gotten into? The whole mountainside is coming down on him. Um, the practice of digging out the ditches, dumping on the hillside, it didn't help anything. The mulch that they left in the ditch, it's, it's just a big swamp there, and now it's dropped again. He's got a 150-foot crack going straight down the mountain towards his house. At first, I was like, well, this will get taken care of, but it's only gotten worse. It's like the second year that we're dealing with this. And this last rainfall it is coming loose, and I'm terrified, basically. I mean, my, a couple of my doors in my house are not working right anymore. And his house, he's going to go first, and maybe I'll go next. And my other neighbor over here, she's got problems, too. It's, it's terrifying. I've lived here more than half of my life, and I used to love it. Now I'm just kind of scared. I don't know what to do about it. So. Now, is this somebody's property, like, yeah. on the outside? So, okay. Well, the main road, um, what, what I watched happen when they came out and cleared up after we had that large wind from last Memorial Day, they left the mulch in the ditch, and in the wintertime it froze. It was a big chunk of ice, 30 feet long, 5 feet wide, and it just pushed the road out, and it dropped. And it's happened again. And I don't appreciate the way they fixed it. I tried to give my two cents into how they should do it, and they just, we're going to blow this mulch up on the hill. And I said, what goes up comes down. And I just walked away because I, I didn't really feel like he cared what I could think about, much less take any advice that I had. I've experienced the problems out there. I've seen them happen. I know they know what they're doing. They're covered up. And I miss. Everybody's got problems, I know, but I'm really worried about the outside coming down. And the water ran for eight hours. He got a small insurance claim to fix his property. And at this point, it is never going to be enough. I mean, it's, when that mountainside is going to come loose, it's just going to wind up in the river. Um, and then back when the TVA flash still hit, uh, they left the water up that year and the ice. It eroded probably 10 feet of my bank or their bank. And if you take out the bottom, the top is going to come down. And I can't afford, I don't have the strength, money, or knowledge how to fix it. But I know what's wrong. And it, it just scares me. Um, 
Thank you. I, I would like to encourage um, our road committee, maybe the next time, one of these gentlemen here, or Mr. East, is the... Can we ask you a question, sir? Sure. My name is Ben Dan. Yeah. Uh, this is Jerry. We have a couple other members here who is on the road committee. Did you say that's Diggy Valley? The Sportsman Club Road. Sportsman Club Road. Where is that? It's right off Sugar Grove, or Sugar Grove, Diggy Valley Road, Sportsman Club. If you, if, sorry, in essence of time, could, could you write your name and phone number down for them and they can give you a call, possibly get with you when the next meeting is and so okay. forth? That'd be great. I, I just live right up front of me in Dickey Valley, so. I mean, we've had more water. You know, 25 years ago, they came in, they basically cut all the 100-year-old trees off the top of that mountainside. And ever since then, we've had more water than I could ever imagine. And I don't know how they got approved to do that, because that's a, one of the steepest hills around here. If, it, if it's okay with you, just for time measures. I can come and see you one day. I'll try to make an effort to try to come and see you and talk with you one day this week. Well, I do appreciate that. Yes, sir. Sir, while you were writing, would you write your neighbor's name and address down too that's having a problem? Okay. Anyone else like to address the commission? I'm Michael Parkinson, 222 Hop Trail. I uh, want to just come up and thank you guys for your representation of citizens in your last vote at the meeting uh, last month about consolidation. I want to thank you for your open and honest participation with the school board and civil participation at the last workshop. I think that was a great meeting. Uh, and, and you explained why you voted as you voted, which uh, is not required. Uh, and I also want to thank you for continuing to require that other options be presented, explored, the facts understood, and uh, that you, you guys understand it before we move forward with any proposal concerning the building program or anything at the new school. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Anyone else like to address the commission? Just a reminder, this will be the last opportunity unless the commissioner, Mr. Redman, yields to you. Uh, Henry Redman, 142 Clearview Drive, <coughs> Rockwood. I came up here tonight to speak to you for a minute. Uh, the Rockwood American Legion Post 50 is sponsoring a prayer breakfast. <coughs> be on 18 May. Calling it the Roan County Memorial Day Prayer Breakfast. And I came up to invite all of you to attend. And all of you back here, many of you like to see it. If you'd like to get a ticket, see any American Legion Post 50 member or a member of the uh, Rowan County Military Honor Guard. Uh, the guest speaker will be Ron Travis from District 31. We invited him because we don't see him down here very much, and we want to get him more involved with our community, not just Dayton and the other communities up there that he represents. Um, I guess that would be it. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Anybody else like to address the commission? <coughs> Anyone else like to address the commission? Seeing that, we'll move on to the county attorney's report. Last week, Dennis Ferguson and I went out and looked at the uh, Sportsman Club Road issue that Mr. Turpin talked about. Mr. Turpin is correct. There is a very large hill uh, across the street from him that seems to be coming down, and there's a small portion of it that's actually presently laying within the road. The problem the county has is the county's right-of-way just extends from ditch to ditch and the county has no authority to go onto this private property and do something about the erosion. If you as a body determine that uh, it's in the county's best interest to do something about the erosion, then we're going to have to get a slope easement from the owner of that property, either through a voluntary conveyance or through an eminent domain proceeding. Tony Brown, uh, the road department, and I have discussed it also, and he's of the opinion that 
if he clears up now what's lying in the roadway and lying in the ditch, then there's a bunch of stuff that's on up that hill that's just going to fall down and it could fall down across the road into the property of Mr. Turpin and his neighbors. So the highway department is reluctant to start clearing this area without a slope easement that allows them to go onto this property and clear it up and re-slope it to try to alleviate some of their problems. We also went out and looked at Airport Road and Bowman Bend Road and Riggs Chapel. And after the recent flooding, there are portions of those roads that have actually slid off and no longer exist. And I'm told by Mr. Brown that the engineer that the highway department has hired states that it's really not feasible to try to build back those portions of the roads that have slid off, but the roadway needs to be moved over in the other direction <coughs> to uh, make up for that lost land. On those particular roads, the county is going to have to acquire easements in order to accomplish this. And I'm also told by Mr. Brown that the engineer that they have hired to evaluate this says before that he can determine um, how much footage needs to, be, needs to be obtained for these easements. He actually needs to go on the private property and do some core sampling to determine what's there. I'm presently trying to locate the owners of the private properties along these areas to get permission to do the core sampling. Um, at this point, I've only identified the owners of the properties on Ridge Chapel, and they have consented orally to giving permission for the county to go in and do the core sampling on their properties. I'm preparing a document for them to sign, and it should be ready tomorrow to give written permission. Um, but at this point, I'm going to call Mr. Brown and see if I can meet with him this week so we can look at the tax map and try to figure out what parcels are affected. Um, the only other matters I have, we, our next court date on the property maintenance cases is April 4, and that is merely a report back case report back dates on some older cases that have already been to court and the chancellor gives them some time to comply and makes them come back to court and show their efforts to comply we have 20 of our new property maintenance cases scheduled for a first hearing on june 20 and the final thing that I have is I've submitted Resolution 31903, um, withdrawing the authority that you've given me to file certain property maintenance suits because they're no longer owned by the people that I was authorized to sue. When you get to that, I need to ask for an amendment because there is a typo. I've got a name misspelled on that one, and we need to correct it before you act on it. That is my report. Does anyone have any questions? Ms. Mr. Berry. Mr. Deputy, on the, on the case of, of the land there at Mr. Turpin's, uh, I think he indicated that you've indicated that, that timber has been has been cut off the off the property. I haven't been on the property to see whether timber has been cut. <coughs> you can tell on the on the hillside that slopes toward the road. There's a lot of downed trees. I saw one that looked like it had been cut. I saw some others that looked like maybe they had rotted or blown over. But the problem that Mr. Brown has expressed from the highway department is if we start clearing the ditch and the part that uh, uh, has fallen onto the road and all these tree carcasses and, and, and the mud and the loose dirt is just all going to slide down. Can, can we write the property on it? And, yes, and that, that's my intention. I took a picture of the property um, 
while I was out there, and that letter should go out sometime this week with a copy of the picture. Because they would have some liability in the, in the water, the erosion part of it, right? They're, they're responsible for <clears throat> runoff. Well, they're responsible for um, problems, the condition of their property. So if we might have that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Smith. Uh, Mr. Barry hit on a, a question too that I had. Just want to see if that individual across from Mr. Turpin had been identified. I haven't identified him yet, um, but I should be able to tomorrow because now I know that Mr. Turpin's address. So I just need to look up Mr. Turpin's property and then see who owns the property across the street. And I assume I asked for a, or to go into discussions regarding a slope easement or whatever could fix this problem? Yeah, what I will be doing is contacting this person and see if he'll grant a slope easement, and then if he will not, then it's going to come back to you, and you're going to have to authorize me to either negotiate a purchase of one or to file an imminent domain suit. And one last question. Let's say the, what the highway department were to go out there without that slope easement to clear out that ditch, and there was uh, a movement of the soil back toward the road would, 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 would the highway department and us have any liability to that owner if we did it without that easement? Well, first of all, you would have a liability to that owner for trespass, maybe some negligence if you go on his property without his permission and remove that, but the main liability I see is the liability the county might have to Mr. Turpin and the people across the street if we go over there and just remove what's in the right of way and then everything else falls down across the road onto Mr. Turpin's property. So, so we can make a bad situation even we, worse. We can make a bad situation worse. So if you as a body want to do something <coughs> is we get the slope easement from the person across the street one way or the other so we can start at the top and work our way down. Thank you. Any more questions or comments for the county attorney? Hey. Mr. East. It's down on the Rockland Mountain. Do they uh, do you have to buy any kind of easement down or anything to widen that road? Well, that's one where I need to meet with Mr. Brown and he needs to help me determine who the property owner is because I've, I've gone out and looked at it. I've looked at the tax map and I've identified two potential properties that are owned by different people that we would need to get right of ways from at least one of those properties. And I'm not, and, and, and my problem is I'm not remembering exactly where the issues, there are two issues in the road, I'm not remembering exactly where they are, so I can't just look at the map and say it's this person's property or no, it's this person's property. That's a question. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Barry. Counselor, is, is, is that something that, that we might get our legislators to look at and see if there's some way that we might get some relief from the state? Because that's, that seems all of that started after, especially shifting up there after the interstate. Is that something that, that, that we, we should at least check into? Well, are you saying that the problem resulted because the interstate was, was built? I'm saying we, we've had some shifting since that, and, and I think the road commissioner was actually down here at one time looking, looking at some of that on the previous one. I'm just saying this is about the third one we had and it just it, it, it seems like it gets worse every time every time there's there's one there that's connecting um, that's connecting probably three counties. Well if I, I mean I think it's a good idea to seek help from from anybody but from a legal perspective if you're saying that <laughs> our road failed because the interstate was built where it was built, then you probably got a statute of limitations issue that will be insurmountable. 
and you just get creative with the wording then that we don't want to accuse them of anything. We're just asking them to, to, to try to help us with a bad situation. I, I, I think that you would appeal to their right. conscience and, and their equitable uh, reasoning uh, rather than the court system. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the county attorney? Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Mr. Woody, you have three minutes for your review. <laughs> so a couple of things. Uh, the Budget Committee and the Legislative Committee met uh, just preceding this meeting, and there's some recommendations that came out of the Budget Committee that we can talk about on the resolutions there. From the legislative agenda, just to, want to follow up on a couple of things, uh, there was a, an item that was deferred back to the Legislative Committee uh, from last month uh, that dealt with a, a special service county that we were considering uh, due to uh, the situation with TBA. Uh, that has been basically postponed, I guess, till a September meeting when the legislature, sometime in the fall, the legislative committee gets uh, back in session because it's really too late to file any bills at this time. Uh, there was another bill that uh, had been filed. Uh, it was outside of the commission's recommendation or an action from the, uh, the commission one way or the other. It's a, it's a bill that would impact the uh, delinquent tax uh, payers of um, Rome County uh, who were impacted by the Asheville. Uh, I, I've been on, on the phone with the comptroller's office today. I was on the phone with them two or three days last week. I've been on the phone a number of times with the uh, the uh, ma uh, city manager of Kingston about the financial impact of that. We are not really sure, all of us, and that's been an individual case. Uh, we looked at it. We're thinking it's in the neighborhood of a couple hundred thousand dollars would be a cost to us, uh, maybe at least that much to the city also. <clears throat> it's a bill uh, that would uh, require the county to pay back to um, a delinquent property tax owner who was impacted by the Asheville uh, amounts of money that would reduce the penalty and interest that is charged on back tax property. So uh, that bill is still out there. There's been a lot of opposition from it across the state. Uh, the legislative uh, committee did not take any action on it. Uh, it is relatively uh, came to our attention about two weeks ago, and we started working with the comptroller's office on it. And actually, we were reached out from the comptroller's office before we were aware a bill had been filed. Uh, there's a couple other bills that you all recommended last month at the commission meeting that you can track online. One was the principal city bill. Uh, one dealt with uh, sales and use tax that is collected at. Uh, the Y-12 facility actually to be used still in the area, the local option. Uh, there was one bill the commission, I think, recommended that has not been filed, so that would be placed on uh, the agenda for next year legislative committee. That was the one that was asking the state legislators to uh, require the Board of Edu the State uh, Department of Education to uh, when they were doing statistical analysis to compare counties to counties in special school districts, special cities to cities. Uh, as was outlined in the resolution, your city governments have, your, your, your city school system have about six or seven revenue sources, and counties have three revenue sources, and it just doesn't seem right that uh, when you compare, you can always see that the, that the city dollars a city school system have a whole lot more dollars per student than counties do because every time you raise yours as a county whether it be property tax or sales tax that has to be shared with the city and the city governments can put any money they want to through a property tax or just transfer money to their city so to me we filed that resolution i think you all uh, approved it last month but our legislators have not taken any action in filing that so that will go back on that agenda for the legislative committee next year. <coughs> there was, a, there was a, uh, a recommendation came out of the uh, legislative committee tonight to waive the 12-day rule on a resolution that deals with uh, 
local option sales tax paid by out-of-state sellers. So when it comes time for the resolutions, we would like for that to be considered uh, for the sales tax of out-of-state sales. Um, Councilor Lefew, myself, a couple others received an email and uh, a draft document from our attorney, uh, Jim Scott, on the TBA um, Jacobs uh, potential lawsuit. So we, we got that last week, I think, so we've got that under review. That lawsuit has not been filed, to my knowledge. And that was something you got a copy. Did you get a copy of it too? I got it late Friday. Yeah, we got it late last week. But just to let you know the status of that, it has not been filed and it's under review. Uh, Mr. Berry indicated uh, we ha we have received. I guess it was today. Um, I was on in conversation last week with uh, the Tennessee Department of Environment uh, and Conservation. Uh, the uh, TDEC. Uh, with the Department of Health put together a sampling plan for the Swan Pond Sports Complex. Uh, it was a plan to ensure the safety of the children and the workers who are on that facility. Uh, we received that plan about two weeks ago. We forwarded it on to TVA. They reviewed it for a week, a week and a half. They sent that back to us with uh, some recommendations. We then sent it to TDEC to say, can you incorporate this into your plan? We received back today from TDEC uh, basically a schedule of when, uh, how they are directly working with TVA and when the sampling could take place. Uh, from all indications of the email we received today, probably the soonest that we would have any results, it looks like, would be the fall. So from that standpoint, it, it, it appears that the, um, the use of the Swan Pond Sports Complex uh, is, is off limits until next fall at the earliest. So if your constituents ask about that, I, I've kind of briefed you that We've gone through these series of steps. Uh, TDEC and TVA are still negotiating on what would be the best sampling uh, for the work for the uh, our workers and the children that play on that complex. Uh, there's some discussion still from the Environmental Review Board on this that will take that into consideration whether we should do any core sampling that are a, even a deeper depth than what would be played and would be mowed. <laughs> various trenches so it could drag on a little bit uh, longer than that Mr. Wood, <coughs> sure uh, has there been any talk maybe about giving that land back to TVA and on our equipment off a little bit well that since we've had this uh, last uh, email today uh, there hasn't been no discussion from this body uh, we were you know our we had hoped that TVA would be uh, receptive to the uh, TDEX and Department of Health sampling. I, I think they want to do maybe something more extensive. So I don't want to, uh, you know, um, say anything bad about TVA's sampling. It might have been more extensive in places. We were hoping we could get all that wrapped up and sampling could have taken place by the end of March and results by the 1st of April. Uh, but we see, based on that schedule now, that that's not going to happen. Uh, from that standpoint, it's, a, it's another uh, time, uh, point in time that this body may want to consider another alternative, which they have not yet. So that is something for the commission to decide and their sports and recreation committee uh, how we want to go forward. Because part of the problem that you have that we've discussed is so we've got very expensive um, sod uh, soccer grass there that if you don't mow it uh, you may lose some of the value you have there uh, you may lose all the value you have there but at this time it is off limits uh, I don't know whether this this body took an official position or not I know it was discussed a lot it was discussed a lot the environmental review board with the Department of Health 
and TDEC what we should do. Uh, but from our standpoint, uh, we will we do not allow anybody on the site. And the question came up is can we hire a third party to go over there and mow it and maintain it? Uh, that is a question that can that we have discussed with the county attorney a little bit, but we decided where we needed to go really on that is we need to ask our insurance provider is would we be protected? Uh, would you would you protect us as from an insurance claim if we had someone over there and was hurt or we had been, been sued? I mean, you know, we could have indemnity clauses, but the real question is if you get sued, I guess would you win? Would your insurance company, you know, defend us? Uh, would they insure us at all? So our quest, our next question, counselor, unless you have some advice, is we're asking our insurance provider, do we have coverage if something happens over there, either to our employee or our contractor, and knowing uh, what we know and knowing that this is under advisement? So I have no other advice. I think that's one of the first questions you should ask. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess also if this body and that committee uh, took it upon them to, to say, you know, we need to give this back to TVA, would the county be reimbursed for the improvements made to the property, such as the sod, uh, With, uh, the, the rooms and the, all that? Actually, the sod was put down by TVA that was part of it. We had to do some extra work. We did put some buildings over there and various things. That is something we would have to look at uh, under the lease agreement. The property is TVA's, uh, we have it under a lease agreement. So we'd have to have the council look at that. Uh, we could request that reimbursement. Um, so to boil that down in layman terms, so everybody understands, we're just basically waiting on the TVA to tell us what we can sample and how we can sample. No, I don't think it's that. I think that they are going to allow us to sample. Uh, their sampling plan is is a little bit different than the state sampling plan. Not that the state's in disagreement with them. Uh, I, I don't think it's just that they, you know, part of the thing that the TVA wanted to do, and we saw it first of, firsthand, is because we thought of it. You know, if TDEC, if somebody's coming on your property sampling your stuff, you probably ought to have a sample right beside them. And that was part of it. It was some, some of it was pretty simple. Mr. Mr. Mary. Well, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, at last, at last month from, from the Recreation Committee, I think we asked, so we're, we're confirming that we, we're off limits. Right now, we're off limits, and, and as I'm here now, as, as, as long as our committee continues to work with, with Mr. Baird and, and you through the, through the emails and, and all this other stuff, <clears throat> it's our contention, I think, I'm speaking for the committee, that that we will remain off limits until such time as as we can meet and 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 gather information to bring back to this body. Is that I there? As from the executive office and based upon all the discussion, I will not allow uh, the employees that work under me access to the facility. And that's what we. That was and our last. We meeting. have told them to, and, and I think your committee fully agrees. That's right. That's that. what so we we established at our last meeting was that if the public can't be there, our employees can't be there. That's correct. And 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 therefore, because it was <coughs> stated uh, by Mr. Beard that that without water and and mowing, that's going to be a hay field on the on the non soccer side. The soccer field will will die out as well. So Possibly that's just true. that's just that's just the way it's, it's going to be. And as long as we all understand that that right now, without that recreation committee meeting and, and bringing something back, then we're we're off limits. Mr. Thank Boyd, you. did you have anything else to add to your report? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just halfway through. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just halfway through. I'll just check out so, so um, if y'all didn't ask all these questions, it'd go a little quicker. Uh, so, um, as a number of commissioners had the opportunity to tour some of the road uh, uh, damages, I'd like to just report back on that. Uh, we we heard on the news how much damage that Knox County has. Uh, and uh, Tim Suger is with us today. He's been doing a lot of the uh, damage assessment too and gathering the data. Uh, 
44 million dollars to Knox County. Uh, Six million dollars is greater to Roan County than 44 million dollars is to Knox County. So if Knox County thinks that they have a problem, uh, it's 95 dollars per, per per individual. Ours is about 113 per individual. So we had significant damages. Some of the commissioners, and I know the road department appreciates y'all going on the trail. I appreciate you going on the trail, but until you saw some of the damage firsthand, you really weren't aware of every community basically being affected to some degree. Uh, from that said, um, in talking with the road department, and, and we anticipate some FEMA relief, there's no question. Uh, we also anticipate that uh, we'll work through budget committee and others, uh, road department, uh, they do not have enough money to, to fix it. Uh, they are cash flowing the engineering right now. They're cash flowing some of the project. They take that out of their asphalt budget. There's still not near enough money in the asphalt budget. We're looking at road damages, what, Tim, four million? 4.5. 4.5. Their entire budget is $3 million. Their entire budget is $3 million. The damage is 4.5. Uh, they've spent probably a million and a half already because we're halfway through the year. They did some paving last fall. So uh, it appears that we're going to have to go in, in, into the uh, borrowing for uh, the cash flow up until we get paid from FEMA. Uh, it would be my recommendation. Uh, I have talked with the, the Tennessee Loan a pool about borrowing some short-term money uh, and just kind of anticipate next month unless you all say no we're not going to do it we'll leave the roads the way they are that uh, I will have a, a debt resolution before you for consideration next month so we can continue forward on this it, it looks like we will be uh, bar it's my my intent to borrow this from the loan pool since it's a, a sh it'll be a short interest I mean a short a, a term amount, probably no more than three years. Uh, again, it takes FEMA about two to three years after they do the assessment. Now, I think they're going to be here next week or tomorrow, Tim. You know, they'll be tomorrow on their first uh, visit. Mr. Meadows, you have a question on that? I do. I know that well, we were declared a disaster area regarding the uh, water or were we? We did not, we had this discussion, we did not uh, declare a emergency disaster. When you declare an emergency disaster, that means to our information that you are asking for outside of Rome County help uh -huh. and that you're willing to pay for that. We felt comfortable with our road department, uh, our uh, EMS, EMA, rescue squad, cities, everything that was done uh, to uh, keep from having an emergency. And we had a disaster, but we didn't have an emergency disaster. <laughs> the governor made some sort of... Now, the governor made the declaration, so that allows FEMA to come into the state of Tennessee. We are going to reach our uh, financial threshold to be able to... That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. That, by doing that, that expedite the reimbursement to us you think i don't think so no okay. it hasn't in the past when we've had similar uh, incidents thank you so in front of you all i know you all want me to go through this but in front of you all we have given you the financial we do this every month the only one i was going to bring to your attention is the first line property tax property tax were due was due the last day of february uh, most, uh, we get things in the mail, we're at 94% collection, uh, which is really on track to where we have in prior years. It is one of our big numbers, but you can look through that, and I'm sure uh, you'll give me a call if you have any questions about that one. <laughs> the uh, final thing on my report uh, is we passed out a uh, invasive aquatic plant report and Dr. Timothy Joseph uh, is here. He's on the Environmental Review Board. He put a lot of this or maybe all this document together and at this time uh, he's coming forward. I asked him to come up to go over his report briefly. 
And as he's doing that, if you all would take uh, one of these and just pass it around, it is the, kind of the organizational chart, and you may want to speak to that. And uh, Dr. Joseph. Thank you very much, Ron. Is there any way we can move up Miss Roddy and Harriman before we go? Just as soon as. Through this, there's no protocol I see that we have to follow. We have him come up afterwards. Just going to have to Doesn't matter to me. Like, right, he'd be here one with the other. I think that'd be great because there's a lot. There's people already leaving. Mm -hmm. So I sit back down. <laughs> yeah, please do. We'll okay. follow my report for just a moment. Sorry. Let's get down to resolution honoring the Harriman Middle School girls basketball team. I got a motion by Commissioner Hendricks and second by Commissioner Gann. Commissioner uh, Hendrickson, if you've got the, the girls, come on up and Mr. Uh, Hendrickson's going to read the uh, resolution. County Commission honoring the Harriman Middle School girls basketball team for their winning performance. Whereas the Harriman Middle School girls basketball team excelled in postseason play, and whereas the Harriman Middle School girls basketball won the TMSAA 1A state championship, <laughs> whereas the Harriman Middle School girls basketball players are to be commended for their efforts and their dedication to the game. And whereas head coach Johnny Jones and assistant coaches are to be commended for their leadership and their dedication to the team. Whereas it is altogether fitting and proper that the Harrow Middle School girls basketball team be honored for their performance in regular season and in postseason play. Now therefore be it resolved that the Ron County Commission does hereby honor the Harrow Middle School, School girls basketball team for their winning performance. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be presented to Johnny Jones, head coach of the Harriman Middle School Blue Devils girls basketball team. Go Blue! the first ever state real state tournament of the Tennessee Middle School uh, Association for a basketball team boys and girls and our girls from Harriman won it and Mr. Barry can attest to this that, well, that was a first too being on the radio and it was ever broadcast on the radio and I don't think I've ever been as exciting in broadcasting during that game half the people couldn't understand what we were saying <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gann, do you have any no, I'd like to say how proud we are of all of our teams in, in Rowan County with, with you. It's um, Our youth are, is, are important to us, and, and one of the ways that we have the youth important to us is to have them involved, and as parents and as members of our community, is to be involved with them and, and to do things like this, to celebrate them. Our youth today, we have so many problems, it seems like we'll be not able, we don't have the opportunity where we can, and where we can, we, we need to. They're outstanding in what they do, and they're outstanding for the community, and they're our future, and they're, and they're today. So we're proud of them, and we wish them all the luck and everything, and, and a good season next year. Any other commissioners like to add or question or comments? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend that resolution and add, and, and, and add uh, for assistant coaches Tom Tilley and Leslie Ladd, get their name on the resolution as well. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. That's, that, those are... Uh, uh, I know they've been together. He's he's uh, he's taught Coach Jones everything he knows over there. So I like to get their names on that. And congratulations. Any other commissioner? 
We'll go ahead and make it legal. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those like sign. Motion carries. Thank you, girls. Thank you. of Carolyn Bush Roddy. Whereas Carolyn Bush Roddy played basketball at Roan County High School from 1966 to 1971, where she was selected to several all-tournament teams, selected all district and sub-state for all four years, MVP of 12 different tournaments her senior year. And whereas Carolyn Bush Roddy attended Hawassi College, where she received several honors such as two-time NJCAA All-American Best Defensive and Offensive Player of the Year, MVP of the National Junior College Tournament, and whereas while attending Wayland Baptist, she led the Wayland Baptist Flying Queens on two AAU National Championships, selected as both a Kodak All-American and Street and Smith All-American, and whereas Carolyn Bushrotty was voted by Texas Panhandle as Player of the Year, and Athlete of the Year in 1975. And whereas Carolyn Bush Roddy was a member of the USA team that won a gold medal in the 1975 Pan American Games. And whereas after graduating from Wayland Baptist in 1975, Carolyn returned home to Kingston to give back to the community by holding <coughs> summer camps for ages five through 10. And whereas Carolyn Bush Roddy retired from playing in 1982 where she played professional basketball for the Dallas Diamonds. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Roan County Commission does hereby honor and recognize Carolyn Bush Roddy for her achievements and induction into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame Class of 2019 ceremony that was held on June the 8th, 2019. <laughs> what I want to say is I give all honor and praise and glory to God. Amen. Because if it had not been for him, I wouldn't be here today. That's right. And the praise and I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're looking at someone that to was totally healed by God from cancer. I am three years cancer free. an honor and a privilege to be standing here before you all. And I know some of you want to go home, but I need to say this. <laughs> but some of you I went to school with, some of you, your parents watched me play basketball, some of you I've worked with, and all of you I love. I, I appreciate you so much. You don't know what this room does to me tonight. The community has just open their arms and I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, this is history for Roan County because this is a first for Roan County. It's it 
is the only women's basketball hall of fame in the world. It's history. It's history for our state. Yes, Miss Joan Cronin is going in, and I'm proud to be inducted with her. But this is Roan County. This is where it happened. That's right. And I praise and I thank y'all. I just praise and thank God for everything that He's done for me. Because, like I said before, if if it had not been for God, I couldn't have done anything. It's not anything that I have done, but I want to give praise and honor to my grandmother. <clears throat> Bear with me. I miss her so much. But my grandmother was the cornerstone, other than God, was the cornerstone of my life. She taught me things that no one in this room knows about, but me and her and God. And I, I, I just, I just, I thought when I was growing up, she was the meanest woman in the world. <laughs> I did. I thought she was the meanest woman in the world. But I have come to appreciate and love her because she taught me things. And you all taught me, have taught me things, too, about moral respect, honor, appreciation. And a, give of somebody a smile or a hug. You don't know what that does for somebody. That's right. Mm -hmm. You never know. Coach Jones, I coach with him. Mm -hmm. God has enabled me to do from the high level to the low level, to the in-between level, all over. I've done it all except for uh, coach professional basketball. But who knows? One day, I may do it. <laughs> who knows? I pray nothing is impossible with God. Nothing! But I... <laughs> no, let's don't say that. But I, I truly, truly want to thank you all. And I've got to mention two people here tonight. My family, I, I thank you for coming. I, I appreciate you so much. You just don't know how much. But there's two people here tonight that I have to really thank you that we went to Pat's camp for 28 years together. And she was in visiting her dad. And she is here tonight from Texas, from San Antonio. Thank you, Mark. Stand up. Stand up. And I have a close friend. She's been my friend, I don't know how many years. She's just been my friend, and that's another one that was rough on me. <laughs> and she knows who I'm talking about. But Margie Moore, I love you, Margie. I, I, I love you. She's been a friend. She's accepted me for who I am. She hasn't tried to project anything else on me except what is right. And I thank you for that. I love you, Mark. Stand up. I want to thank my aunt. I, oh, my aunt's holding up three fingers for three minutes. <laughs> and Aunt Barbara because I grew up, see my grandmother raised me, but I grew up with Aunt Erlene and Aunt Barbara and they were my sisters. I was the only child, but I grew up with these two ladies and when mama passed away, Aunt Erlene took over. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. You just don't know how much I love you and appreciate you. My husband, I love you. You know that I do. You know that I do. But again, thank you all so much. Thank you for this honor. It's, it, <coughs> words can, but you know what? This, along with the city council resolution, is going in my trophy case in the Basketball Hall of Fame. All right. All right.
as important to me as getting that big trophy, and I get a ring. I get a ring. Put a ring on it. But, but this is just as important to me as both of those things. And thank you so much. God bless you. Quick, we, we read over the list of achievements she did, and I've known her since I was, I ain't gonna say, or her and my mother were good friends. <laughs> I've known her for, ever since I could know anybody, and Miss Roddy is a true example after everything she's accomplished and been through that has not forgot where she's come exactly. from. That's right. <laughs> Any other commissioner like to make a comment? You better say something. <laughs> Doug got candy. All in favor. Outstanding woman. Outstanding woman in her field. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we go back to the county executive's report. Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just not fair. You're well. <laughs> okay, uh, for the new commissioners that may wonder what in the world I'm doing up here and what the heck this thing is, uh, let me just uh, ask you to look at that uh, single handout that you received. A while back, the Grove County uh, has a, the commission has an aquatic weeds committee. And it asked me to put together a, uh, an advisory group to address the invasive plant problem in, 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 in Watts Bar. Now that structure shows you what we did, we, what we put together, we're a, a 501c3 organization no problem. What you have in front of you, this report is a culmination of a great deal of effort on the part of several key individuals, uh, assessing, putting together, assembling, uh, looking at it, and, and coming up with summaries on what, what we've done to put together this, this document. Uh, this document is, is, is science. It's, it's not speculation. It's not what we think should be done. Uh, I'm going to ask this commission for a favor. And that favor is this. I would very much appreciate it. This thing works. I'd very much appreciate it if you would actually read the first half of this document. Now let me tell you why I'm asking for that. There's a very good executive summary. It was written by a member of the Environmental Review Board, uh, and it also has the recommendations as part of the summary, a summary of the recommendations. How do I adjust it? But the summary is a summary, it's not knowledge. There's no knowledge in the summary. The knowledge is in this is in this publication, that this report that we've provided you. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is because all of you are very aware that the invasive plant problem on Watts Bar is very controversial. I don't have to tell you that, you know that. And when you come up, when the commission comes up with what recommendations they're going to accept and how we're going to implement them, and a fisherman comes up to you and says, I don't want that. I like the weeds. The weeds are really good for fishing. They really are. I know that. I'm a professional fisherman. I've been fishing for many years. I know they're good for fishing. You can look that fisherman in the eye and you can say, you're right. I know you're right. They are good for fishing. They really are. I fish, and I fish at the edge of it. I know they're good for fishing, and you'll know why they're good for fishing. You can tell them. And then you can look at him, and you can say, but what you need to understand is though they're good for fishing, they're destroying the fishery. There's less fish every year. You can explain to him why, it's just how it's destroying the fishery. It's in this document. It's very easy to understand. You don't have to say, well, this recommendation we're going to implement is something I believe we ought to do. You don't have to say what you believe. You can say why you know it's the way to go. But what I'd like you to do, if I, may, if I may, is would you turn to page 44? Okay, 
the reason I'm asking you to do that is because this is a very important part of the report. Uh, just back off that mic just a little bit. Back off? Is that yeah. what I'm doing? There you go. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Thank you very much. That appendix one, let me just read the title, is the relationship between fish and aquatic plants. What am I doing wrong? Okay. The relationship between fish and aquatic plants was done by the Corps of Engineers. And I want you to understand that this is a compilation, and you can see the, the report itself is the next page, and everything that follows. That report is a compilation of five decades, 50 years of research on 300 freshwater lakes in the United States. Five decades, 50 years. And it summarizes those studies. The first half of that Corps of Engineers report explains what's in those, those bibliographic studies that they show that they present there. But that's, and that's a summary of those. Now what I have taken is, I've taken that summary and I have turned it into a very short and sweet bulletized summary of just the negative impacts. I don't talk about the positive impacts. Positive impacts are what we all well know. Those bulletized are the, the negative impacts over a five decade period of over 300 lakes. Okay. It's important to have the knowledge, and what I'm asking you to do is have that knowledge when, when we get together and talk about what we need to do. Okay. Um, what I'd like to ask is for uh, uh, Steve Moore, if you could get back to me when you have time, your Aquatic Weeds Committee, and what we'll do is I'd like to pull together with, with your group and as many of, the, many of the commissioners as would like to be involved, and I hope some of them are, will pull together with yourself, the uh, Watts Bar County Fishery Council key members, and the Environmental Review Board. And what we'd like to do is go over these recommendations, now that you've had a chance to look at them, and decide where we go, what changes, and implement, uh, which ones we want to implement, and establish a, a timeline and how we're going to get this done. Okay. I very much appreciate that. And the only other thing I have left is that I really recommend that the Roan County Commission hold at least one public education seminar, workshop, whatever you want to call it, so that we can educate the public on what's in this report and what the Commission finally decides we're going to do about the aquatic weeds problem. Uh, I think it's very important that the public understand the science that's in here, as well as I hope that you'll understand the science that's in here. So if you could get back to me at your convenience, we'll do it. We'll sit down and we'll hash this out and, and go from there. All right. And if there's no other questions, or you have any questions? Yes, sir. How do you how do you suppose we combat? How do you suppose we combat the weed? No, it's going to take me more than three minutes. Yeah. You got one, <laughs> We have the recommendations are here. How are we going to? There's a number of steps that we're going to need to do to combat the weeds. If, and if you're asking me what, what we should use to actually combat, well, I'm talking about biological and chemical methods. It's in the it's in the executive summary as well. So but spray. You, well, that's yes. Well, not spraying out, applying. Sure. Applying. It's not in the spray. But we have to use a combination of those two. But getting that done, there's a whole lot of information that you need to understand. That's just one of the recommendations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pat. Mr. Woody, have anything thank else you. for your report? That's all I have for my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, we're moving. Thank you, sir. We're moving on to the longer next time. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're moving on to the special orders now. Uh, there is an item that the Legislative and Budget Committee recommended to waive the 12 day rule on, and I want to label that as 3113. If I could get a motion to waive Mr. Meadows, and second. second by Mr. White. Mr. Meadows. Mr. White. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Oh, oh, 03, 1913, is that what you said, Mr. Chairman? Oh, 03, oh, 01, 13. You add it to the last of the, look at our last item on the agenda. What's that number? 19, it should be 19. In my book, it's 12. 03, 1913, the last. Oh, yeah, let me just ask Paul right here. 
for everybody, I know we have some new commissioners asked, 03 means it's March, 19 means it's a year, and 13 is the numerical number of the resolution that we filed. Thank you. If it has a Z on it, it's zoning. Okay, 3, 19, 13. Any? Madam Clark, would you call the roll? We're away from the field day rule. Bell? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Excuse me. Barry? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Yan? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Approved to be added to the end of our agenda. Moving forward to special orders, confirmation of appointment of the Honorable Cecil Crow to the Board of Equalization due to the resignation of T.H. Brown. The new term will expire May 18th, 2020. Motion by Commissioner White, second by Commissioner Bowers. Commissioner White. Uh, I highly recommended uh, Cecil Crow for this appointment. I've been on the Board of Directors for the Office of Prince Historical Society with him for about 10 years. He just pulled a term as Mayor of Baltimore Springs. I think he's qualified for the job. Commissioner Bowers. Any other commissioners? Questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Oh, Kirk. sorry. 14 yes, zero no. Mr. Crow is appointed to the Board of Equalization. Thank you for serving, sir. Moving on, approval of surety bond 63383158 in the amount of $2,500 for Bernard Bertram as a youth intake officer. Motion by Commissioner Hendrickson, second by Commissioner Bell. Commissioner Hendrickson. Nothing further. Commissioner Bell. Nothing. Any other questions? <coughs> Madam Clark, call the roll. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Um, Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14 yes, zero no. Bonds approved for Mr. Bertram. Moving on, approval of surety bond six. Three zero nine one two two three in the amount of twenty five hundred for Marty Miles as youth intake officer. Commissioner Hooks and Commissioner, second by Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Hooks. I think that's off for low, but I think we are to do He's a good guy. Appreciate his work. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Nothing further. Any other comments, questions? A lot we all could say, but we're not going to. <laughs> Madam Clerk, Colorado. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? I reckon. <laughs> Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14 yes. Surety bond for Marty Miles has been approved. Quickly, Mr. Barry wants to give a brief update on NACO. What I really wanted to do is let you know there's, there, that NACO has come up with two apps um, that we can use. The first one, if you, if, when you go to your app store, put in test it, T-E-S-T-I-T. -E Wherever you go, you will be able to um, test the speed of your internet. Um, and, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow folks from all over the country to send this information back to headquarters because what they're finding is, is the maps that we're using for broadband now are distorted. Uh, if one person in a zip code, code has, has internet service, the whole zip code is perceived to have it. So try to test it after the meeting and you'll be able to see what the speed is uploading and downloading here and it will also tell you where you are as, as compo compared to the rest of the country. The other thing is uh, Explore County. You can go to ec.naco.org, and what that will do, you can put in any county in the United States, and it will give you uh, a background. It will tell you when the county was was first uh, chartered, uh, how many residents are in there, and all how how the how the government is made up. Ours will show 15 commissioners, uh, superintendent, the county offices, 
And so it's a great tool if you're going somewhere to put, just put the name of the county in there, and it's, and it's ec.naco.org. Uh, uh, but it was just, a, those, are the, those are the major things. It was a great conference, but those are the major things that we brought back that you can use right here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Berry. Thanks. Zoning resolution 319010, a resolution of Ron County Planning Commission recommending action by the Ron County Legislative Commission on a resolution amending the Ron County Zoning Map. I have a motion. Motion by Commissioner Meadows. I'll second. Second by Commissioner White. Commissioner Meadows. We, this is what we, I guess, had met on earlier today. And this is just to get property back into compliance that had a, a zoning, I mean, a permit issue. Correct. Somewhat in error. But Correct. It's okay with it. But very good. That's it. Commissioner White. You, Mr. Cuff, if he has anything else to say. Any other questions or comments? This is what we went over earlier in the public hearing. See none, Madam Clerk, call roll. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hickman? Oh, sorry. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14, yes. Resolution 319-01Z is adopted. Moving on to new business, resolution 31901, a resolution authorizing the county attorney to file a lawsuit regarding the properties as listed on attached case request form by viol violation by violating Ron County Resolution 11-1209 and or resolution 11-1208 regarding the 2012 International Building Codes and the 2012 International Residential Codes. Do I have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Bell, second. Yes. Commissioner Moore. And I think, gentlemen, Mr. Cofer is going to ask for an amendment. Is that correct, Mr. Cofer? Yes. Uh, we have one other property that needs to be added to that that should have been on there. And I didn't realize that we didn't have it there. The address is uh, 1005 Winton Chapel Road, Rockwood. Mr. Berry is very familiar with this one. Yes, sir. Mr. Counselor, they can accept that. Can I accept that amendment or we need to vote on that? I need, somebody needs to move to amend it. I'll make a motion to amend that address to Mr. Meadows, Mr. Gann, Mr. Meadows. Uh, this, would, would this require a waiver being sort of 12-day rule since it's not on the agenda? No, because your resolution is on the agenda. You're just amending. Amend it. Okay. Mr. Gann. Nothing about it. Do it. Can we do that on a voice vote? I'll roll it. Okay, we're going to do that. Just adding this address for the amendment, just a voice vote for the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion is amended. We're back on resolution 31901 as amended. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14 yes. Resolution 31901 is <coughs> Resolution 31902, resolution authorizing the county attorney to file lawsuits against each property owner regarding the properties as listed on a <coughs> case request form by violating Rome County Resolution. Uh, 2101 April 2013 regarding the Rome County zoning regulation and or resolution number 11403 regarding overgrown vegetation accumulated in debris. I have a motion. So motion by Commissioner Berry. Second by Commissioner Meadows. And I believe we need to make an amendment to this also. Is it the same address? Same address. So I have a motion to amend. <coughs> motion by Commissioner Berry to amend. Second by Commissioner uh, White to amend. Any question or comment on the amendment? Voting on the amendment, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Okay, back, uh, amendment passes. Back on resolution 31902 as amended, Commissioner Berry. I just, uh, we read, a, and, and I'd like to thank Mr. Cole for coming down. We had a group from, from Crystal Cove today. And I, I, what I want to say is, these are folks who've never lived in Maroon County, and they're choosing to retire here and, and the, the, the common thread through all of this whole thing was how trashy the county is uh, that, they, that they can't they can't go anywhere without seeing you know the side of the roads and 
and things. And, and this this resolution that we're that we're passing here tonight is is a perfect example. They have to go by, but um, that's that's what we're being perceived as. And, and I appreciate what we're doing to to clean this thing up. Thank you. Mr. East. Cover this on the road where we talked about. Yes, sir. Okay. Any more questions or comments? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Barry. Bowers. Yes. Brashears. Yes. East. Yes. Ellis. Yes. Gann. Yes. Hendrickson. Yes. Hester. Yes. Hooks. Yes. Meadows. Yes. Moore. Yes. White. Yes. Wilson. Yes. 14, yes. Resolution 319 02 is adopted uh, as amended. Thank you, Mr. Cofer. Resolution 319 03, a resolution rescinding authority for the county attorney to file certain lawsuits. Thank you. We have a motion. Motion by Commissioner Meadows, second by Commissioner Hendrickson. And I do believe that we may need an amendment on this too, correct, Mr. Lefew? Yes. Harold and Nina Pickard. I've spelled it right in one paragraph. I've spelled it wrong in another one. I've spelled it as Pickens. So you want to correct, make an amendment to correct the spelling? Yes, to Pickard. Make a, uh, Mr. Meadows, would you make a motion to amend that to spell it Pickard? I will. I'll second that. Second by Commissioner White. Commissioner Meadows, anything? No. Commissioner White? No, sir. Anything on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Amendment. It passes. Back on resolution 319.03 as amended. Mr. Meadows, did you? I beg your Yeah. Do you have anything? No. Commissioner no, Henderson? No, sir. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Gann. Uh, I do know, and I spoke with Mr. Topher about this, uh, the Pickards, uh, not and Harold, uh, not as uh, passed away a few years ago, and Mr. Picker uh, died last year. I do not know. Do we know who has acquired that property? And no, and if no one comes forward to claim it, then you can authorize me to file a suit against the unknown heirs and. What I have to do is file a suit and then have the court appoint somebody to stand in as administrator of the estate. And that way we can we can get an order for the county to go on to the property and do whatever is necessary to be done at the county's expense. Have, have we made any effort yet to contact? I do know some of the families. Uh, there are two brothers of Mr. Pickard that are uh, presently living. If, uh, I do know those individuals. Uh, one of the brothers actually lives uh, adjacent to uh, Mr. Picker's property. Uh, and I don't know if he was the heir to it, but the other lives in Harriman. If, so, if you can provide me that information, I'll be happy to contact them. But the only information I have is what's on public record. And in this situation, there's nothing on public I record as to the I will give you their names. Okay. Address. I would appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Good off, Commissioner again. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, call her up, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14, yes. Resolution 319.03 is adopted as amended. Moving on to resolution 319.04, resolution rescinding. Resolution 10.18.23, adopted by the Rome County Commission on October 15, 2018. I have a motion. Motion by Commissioner Bowers. Second by Commissioner Berry. Mr. Bowers. Uh, I feel a little bit responsible for this. <laughs> Honestly, I, I have not been to a meeting yet of the Environmental Review Board, which I'm now on, and I didn't have any information on any of this. TDEC is not real happy with what's going on up to this point, and there's just a lot more uh, public comment that needs to be reviewed. Um, I'm also now in the Energy Community Alliance with uh, Mr. Woody representing Rome County and there's just a lot of things going on that it's not that we need to be 
for or against it at this point, we just need to hold off. We just kind of jump the gun. <coughs> Commissioner Barry. Uh, I would accept her apology and support her motion. Commissioner, uh, is that almost fair? Commissioner Gannon. I apologize. Is this on rescinding the resolution for the letter? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman that spoke earlier, is he still here? I don't believe so. Uh, I was going to state, I don't remember his name, but I was going to, to speak with him also. Uh, the landfill uh, that's good, that we made the resolution to be constructed. Uh, I do know uh, that last year, uh, late 2018, the uh, largest mercury cleanup uh, was completed on the. I apologize. The uh, the largest mercury cleanup was completed over on the Y12 project. Uh, they was a little over three and a half ton of mercury, free what we consider free mercury collected onto the pro from that project. Uh, that mercury is being put into a holding facility and will be processed into recycling. That mercury belongs to the federal government, uh, so it will be sent back into to the government. Uh, we we do know that uh, there is a lot of mercury at Watchwell. We actually do not know the amount of mercury that at Watchwell. Uh, we don't need to know the amount of mercury that is at Watchwell. Uh, but there is a problem there. Watchwell uh, and the surrounding areas uh, does have, is contaminated with mercury. It's something that we're going to have to deal with, unfortunately, in our community. Our community in Rome County and Anderson County and some of the surrounding counties are going to have to deal with that and we're going to have to work with that. Uh, we do have a landfill, uh, EMWF, uh, that's on Bear Creek Road. Um, it's a very successful landfill. Uh, we have successfully put in K25, K27, K30, K31 uh, debris, demo debris in those buildings. The, the gentleman was right when he talked about mercury uh, radioisotopes and some other things. Uh, there's a lot of processed materials that's being put into those burial grounds. Uh, they're very successful. Uh, I'm not here to campaign for them, uh, but I do know that we have technology. I do know that we there is a process is, for doing this is regulated. Um, and I know we're going to have to clean up our environment, and it ha we have to clean it up, and we have to be good stewards and owners of our environment. And that is a process that the government and the contractors uh, that is involved with the DOE facilities is doing right now. So we did pass a resolution. Uh, hopefully that resolution will continue. Uh, I think that what we have to do is continuing to do environmental cleanup. It's something that we're going to have to deal with. My kids, my grandkids, some of your grandkids and probably some of your great grandkids are going to continue cleaning up and environment clean up. So we need to make sure we do it right. And I'm going to entrust that we, that we are continuing to do that right. Uh, three, over three ton of mercury, free mercury. Uh, it's a lot of mercury. And uh, it's something that, that we can take and think that, you know, that we don't know how to worry about that going to a system. The gentleman talked about a fish kill. Uh, there was several, what they call, there's a type of the fish, it's a, it's a minnow, it's not a, they don't really consider it a, a type of fish, they don't have a name for it, it's a minnow. Uh, it happened over the summertime, uh, happened into the creek. Uh, and there was several different factors that they tried to contribute to. Uh, one was the heat over the summertime and some other things, some environmental. They actually cleaned off this section of the creek bed, took out all the trees, the vegetation. Uh, and they, some suspect it was the light and the heat that actually got to the creek. It killed off some of the fish. Uh, it's never had been proven what has killed those fish in the East Fork Creek. Uh, in, in saying that, um, we, we uh, have to continue uh, doing, uh, if we don't clean it up, it's in the ground, 
uh, it's, it's in other areas and in other processes. Uh, it's got to be collected, it's got to be dealt with, it's got to be processed, it's got to be buried. Uh, it has to be done the right way. So just thought I'd give you all that information. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Moore. I fit the uh, resolution back in October and much as we had done with the SMR, the small modular reactors that intend to locate across the river over at the fast breeder side, I guess most people know about it. Uh, we don't tell people how to do their business. There's regulators that do that. We simply endorse that. It, it will have to happen unless we let these structures stand and seep into the ground. Personally, I'd rather demolish these and put them in a lined landfill somewhere where you control it over the years. And there's a multitude of buildings at Y-12 that'll be uh, demolished and placed there. So in order to continue that, and I think everybody in the Environmental Review Board included realizes that uh, these the space has to happen to continue or we walk away from it if they oh, just don't build one okay and the cost associated in Senate west is astronomical which probably would make a difference uh, i can't speak for doe but a lot of times when you're talking about billions of dollars shipping <coughs> as opposed to putting a local landfill next to the one that's already there it's not in a subdivision close to it's on federal property so we simply, this resolution, uh, and I heard about it, that we were worried about it. We're not telling them how to regulate their landfill or the state of Tennessee to tell them what to do. So, you know, we, I think as a commission, as a community or whatever, that already has that, I think we should have and will have a regulated landfill that's determined by the people, not a committee and not a commission. We're not in that business. So I think that's the reason that I put forth the uh, resolution back in October, and that's the reason that I vote not to rescind it, because it's already been for public comment. It's recorded. So it's hard to take back the written work, or spoken work, once you say that. So but I don't know that it benefits us any to say, well, I'm going to rescind that motion now. I'm really not for it now. So that's that's my position. I'm not. I will not vote to rescind it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Wilson. Uh, yes, I know we have Dr. Amy Fitzgerald from the Oak Ridge City Government Services, and I'd like to confer to see if she'd like to speak on this. Ma'am, would you step forward, please? Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Amy Fitzgerald. I'm the Government Affairs Director for the City of Oak Ridge, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, the City of Oak Ridge has been studying this issue since about 2014, and um, to sum it up very succinctly, there are still a number of unanswered questions that TDEC, EPA, and the City of Oak Ridge, Anderson County, the City of Oak Ridge Environmental Advisory Board, Robert Kennedy, who was here previously, he's the chairperson of our Environmental Quality Advisory Board. It's a citizen, volunteer citizen board, similar to the Run County Environmental Review Board. Um, the Run County Environmental Review Board has done a lot of work on this also, and um, the issue, I think there's about seven outstanding issues that TDEC and EPA have been in dispute on for more than two years, and we submitted um, questions and comments to the Department of Energy and to TDEC uh, back in July of last year, and the way the process works um, but the Superfund the cleanup in the Oak Ridge Reservation is that they don't do an environmental assessment similar to the National Environmental Policy Act. They clean it up or they're proposing to clean up the facilities at Y-12 primarily um, through CERCLA. Local governments do not have a seat at the table under the 
this process. And so uh, the city of Oak Ridge, the uh, Energy Communities Alliance have been looking at this issue. With respect to the location, um, it is not next to the existing landfill. If you go back and take a look at the existing landfill, and I think um, uh, I was invited to prepare a paper essentially to look at um, how the original landfill was uh, cited in this one. Uh, the original landfill, which was done under a previous contractor, has had some has had some issues. They um, uh, have had to go back and build an under drain. Um, the uh, uh, new the proposed landfill. Uh, is in an area where the scientific studies show that, uh, that just came out a few months ago, show that in part of the landfill, the groundwater is about a foot underneath the landfill. So in terms of regulation under the CERCLA, the Superfund process that DOE uses, they're, not, they're asking for, I think, four or five different waivers from uh, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, including the requirement that the bottom of the, the landfill has to be 50 foot above the groundwater, and they're asking for a waiver of that. So the city of Oak Ridge, um, the, the comment period on this, DOE uh, has had a public hearing. They had a couple workshops. Um, they have not provided um, answers to some of the questions that need to be answered. Um, if just got three letters in the mail today from TDEC and they're represented here, there's still a number of outstanding technical issues that need to be resolved. One of the questions that keeps coming up time and time again is this landfill that we have currently was proposed to be the only one we needed. It's in the city limits of Oak Ridge. The first landfill area that they looked at, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission requirements would not allow them to put it there because it is uh, too close to the populated area. So the proposed uh, landfill now, what they're doing is they're taking a greenfield site and it would be contaminated with, with mercury. So the material that Commissioner uh, Gam mentioned, the elemental mercury that they've collected from Y-12, that uh, is being stored on site, but they don't have currently have a location to move that to. The material that would go into this landfill is a lot of the process building material from Y-12 and those big buildings. Uh, they don't have waste acceptance criteria at this point, which we keep asking about. We think that a decision uh, about what waste is put in there, how the water is going to be managed, um, how the long-term care of the facility will be managed need to be answered before a decision is made. So the DOE's process they want to make the decision, yeah, we're going to put it here, and then go back and decide the level of mercury that would be accepted to go in there. So with all the issues that we've had related to this and all the questions, um, been to Anderson, Anderson County, had a workshop with DOE on uh, January 7th, and there were no speakers at that. Every speaker came out asking the commission to oppose this because a number of the questions haven't been answered. So the city of Oak Ridge is waiting um, for some additional information before DO, you know, we, we are willing to um, accept this in the community. And um, I think it's a good recommendation to hold off until we receive the answers to that. The last question that um, for you to think about that we keep asking and a number of the stakeholders are asking is why, um, why can't you send this to a licensed facility out west or to the Department of Energy's facilities in Nevada where you don't get you know, five inches of rain in one day? There uh, in Rome County, you've got um, you know one of the best uh, waste management companies in the nation that owns the facility out west, and people want to know why can't you look at 
developing um, the cost comparisons to see why you couldn't ship it out west in a dry climate. So anyway, um, there's many, many questions that have not been answered. And I think you know, the City of Oak Ridge would respectfully request uh, additional time to give the regulators and the Department of Energy uh, time to develop those answers before uh, this is done. Uh, our, our city manager and our city council said this is a 200 year decision uh, for the city of Oak Ridge and I can understand your commissioners that um, you know are employed by the company but you know this is this is something that's very important um, for a bridge, it's a long-term decision, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Commissioner Wilson, you still have a? No, I don't have anything for you. Just so everybody's clear, this was a. This is our vote's not going to impact whether they build it or not. This was just a recommendation to the the company, so everybody's clear. A lot of people may be sitting there thinking, "Well, we're going to be building this." It's just this was just a recommendation, Mr. Gann. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And I, I appreciate. I do want to clarify something, though. I am not employed uh, by the company who is constructing or building or is involved in design or function of the of the land field. Okay. I am employed by a contractor who does work inside Y12, and I do understand the regulatory compliance and the rigor in which the work has to be completed. But myself or Mr. Moore are employed by anyone who is directly involved in construction or ownership of the land. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Mr. Perry. As, as I read this, I think all we're doing is taking the recommendation of our environmental review board to say we're going to rescind the one we had and, and then it's going to go forward. And at some point, I assume TDEC will. An EPA will approve it. So I read this EPA has got, has got serious problems with it. So basically, all we're doing tonight is just agreeing with our environmental review board right. to rescind what we did yes. and say, well, yes, let's, yes, thank you. Any more questions or comments? And if I'm correct, a motion to rescind, we have to have a two thirds majority on a vote uh, for a motion to <laughs> rescind. Okay. A yes vote would be to rescind our motion that the Recommendation we did in October, a no vote would be not to rescind. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Bell? No. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? No. East? No. Ellis? No. Gann? No. Hendrickson? No. Hester? No. Hooks? No. Meadows? Yes. Moore? No. White? No. Wilson? No. Eleven no. Three yes. Motion a resolution three nineteen oh four favor. Moving on resolution three nineteen oh five, a resolution to amend resolution seven thirteen ten which expands the acceptance of donations to include real and personal property of which the proceeds would be donated to the Rome County Education Foundation. I have a motion. I have a motion. Motion by Commissioner Meadows. I have a second. Second by Commissioner Barry. Commissioner Meadows. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward to me that the uh, Throne Education Foundation will now be explicitly able to accept donations of, um, I guess what we call restricted donations, including real and personal property, and use it for the benefit of the schools. Is that correct? I'd like to yield to Mr. Willie Shorty. Yeah, as we looked at this, I, I reported this out probably two months ago where I told the commission I'd received my first <laughs> phone call of somebody who wanted to donate property to the county. And as I talked to that potential donor, uh, that we talked about the Education Foundation, it, it was property that would not be part of the public. So what we'd have to do is sell it. So what they did, 
is, is they went ahead and titled the property to the county with the restriction that the county sell it and give the money to the Education Foundation. So as we worked through that and we talked about it for a couple of months, it kind of dawned on us that we knew we had a donation acceptance policy, but it wasn't explicitly clear that we could receive the donation and then give the donation to someone else. So this kind of clarifies that. We have been given two pieces of property, two lots in one of our premier subdivisions that the individual wanted, I guess, a tax break. They wanted to go to education. They knew that we could dispose of it easier than the foundation could dispose of it. So we're just kind of running it through our books pending this approval. We have been granted the property. It has the restrictions that we sell it and give the proceeds to the foundation. And otherwise we wouldn't have to have that be restriction. We could just take it in and then give it straight. I, I guess that's what we'd have to do is give yeah. it straight to them. But right. this makes it clear for the foundation that we're able to sell it. We'll sell it through a regular procurement and sales process. Commissioner Meadows. Commissioner Perry. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Commissioner Hendrickson. So if, uh, if they donate some high-end property out of a high-end subdivision and there's some homeowner association fees or back taxes, is the county responsible? It, be responsible. It, yeah, this does not have any um, back taxes on it. But future. It, it does have, well, so it's donated to us. The first thing we do <coughs> is we'll turn around and sell it. So this, this will be up for sale. Uh, in just uh, two weeks. Well, if you have no, no takers on it. Because oh, no, I think we'll have takers on well, this. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. in the future. Yeah, we'll have to watch what we accept to make sure that we will clear. Uh, and so the, the Greg gives us a time opinion, says that there's no liens on it outside of, you know. So on something like this, and, and we looked at it and evaluated it, uh, we would sell it, we would give the um, foundation the net, so in other words, we would make sure the current property taxes were paid in this homeowners association, and then we would sell it. Commissioner Hooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this question is for the county. So is this on a case-to-case -case basis, or does any donations coming in have to go through the foundation? No, no, no. This is just on a, someone restricts this. Okay, now if you send us, if you say here's ten thousand dollars, we want it to go to the animal shelter. We already have that policy in place. Our, our donation policy says any gift given to the county for a service that we currently do, we can excel. You've approved that policy. This got a little, a little different. Um, I mean, I think we want to do this. I would highly recommend it. Uh, I would highly recommend that. If you know anybody in your community that wants to give something of value to us, like land for a project like this, you can give it to us. You can give money to the county and put restrictions on it. Commissioner Hooks. Commissioner Meadows. Uh, this goes to what uh, the question that Mr. Hendrickson had. Do we would have the right to refuse a, do a donation. If yes. something came in that we weren't comfortable with or couldn't sell yes. or had any other restrictions. Yeah. Okay. Um, do do, do we, will we sell this or auction it off? Or what, how we will we auction it off. Auction it off. Okay. And, and probably, I mean, okay, so we were given two pieces of property that had been purchased for $110,000, $120,000 a piece. So we felt comfortable accepting this property. We were gracious to the owner. We told the owner, though, when we sell this, we may not near get what you paid for it, and she was she understood she understood that. Um, Commissioner Bowers, uh, why did they not donate it directly to the foundation? Why does it have to go through right now? They had they possibly could have. They had approached us first. And the foundation then would have to find out a way to to uh, to donate it or, or to sell it. So you know, at least we have the restrictions in place that we will have a public auction. We will probably put a minimum bid on it. 
and they really didn't and I do not know how the foundation operates if they would want to keep it for a number of years if they want to pump, pay the homeowners association so we were just trying to make it clear for the donor and we explained explicitly how we would handle it Miss Mr. Bowers would, would the homeowners association be able to stop in any way to that sound that or anything? I know. Good. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. Moore? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 14 yes. Resolution 31905 is adopted. Resolution, yes. I need to be excused. I have a personal commitment. Can we please begin into that? I must be today. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Please stay. <laughs> Resolution 3-1906, resolution regarding Rome County Government pre-65 employee benefit coverage. Motion by Commissioner Berry, second by Commissioner Meadows. Commissioner Berry. Yes, uh, as we mentioned earlier, number 26 report goes goes with this with this resolution and we uh, our ad hoc committee met and uh, this this was something that's that's uh, <coughs> Gotten complicated, but we did uh, in your resolution. We did uh, opt in on number one, uh, and I would yield to Mr. Woody or to uh, Jennifer back here who presented it to us. Whoever, whoever wants to, whoever yeah. wants to. Do it. Yeah, the, if you waste that, I want to get an amendment yeah. okay. for that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Meadows would like to make a motion for an amendment. I would like to add, uh, I guess, the language here that would say to ensure that resolution 319-06 is not construed as creating a vested right to pre-65 health insurance for retirees. Uh, and we have this to be a further resolve that Brown County reserves the right to amend, modify, or cancel the terms of this resolution and the pre-65 health insurance benefits provided through this resolution and further reserves the right to amend, modify, or cancel cancel the corresponding financial contribution of Brown County towards the cost of said 365 health insurance benefits at any time provided the said changes approved by resolution of the Brown County Commission. And this is in an attempt or will keep us from creating a vested interest, uh, I guess, in, a, in our policy that we cannot modify at a future date. This will allow us to do that. So is that correct, Mr. Lefty? Yes. So that's an amendment. Yeah, uh, Mr. Meadows made a motion for that. Do I have a second? Only a minute. Second by uh, Commissioner Hendrickson. We're, we're, if, if you may, if, if, if we may, let's, let's, if you could accept this too, we wanted to change the last whereas oh, yeah. to now therefore be it resolved. Yes, I will add that to my amendment. We'll add that to your amendment. Uh, that's fine, Mr. Hendrickson. And the clerk's got these. Uh, uh, amendments written for them. So, and and just the, the amendment was recommended by our council, uh, and it was a recommendation from the uh, whatever committee that was, a benefit committee, I guess. Benefit, I thought. Yeah. Benefit. So I got a motion and second for the amendment. Any more discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in favor for the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed, like the amendment passes. Now we're back on. Uh, resolution 3-1906 as amended. Commissioner Berry? I mean, I, I would, again, I would, if anyone has any questions, I would, I would yield to Jennifer, Mr. Woody, anyone in the hall. So, so let me just say right quick, and Jennifer can add to this, we received notice again today from the state uh, health insurance that this body had to take action on this by March the 31st. <laughs> And the action that was has to be taken by this body is selecting option one, option two, or the third option there. And the committee recommended option one. Uh, it basically keeps us where we're at on our state health insurance 
uh, availability to anybody who retires prior to age 65 that meets the requirement. And we can we can we can change every year as long as we're as, as long as we've got one. But if we opt out, we can't get back in. That is a good point. If you were to select two or three, you're out forever. You select one, you can change that at any time going forward. Uh, <clears throat> Anything else, Mr. Perry? That's good. Thank you. Mr. Meadows, any Hi. other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, power up, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13 yes. Okay. Can I address the chair? Yes. Did any commissioner make a motion to option one? Option one, option one, option one Mr. Meadows said that. Did you say option one in yours? No, I did not. He did not, mm -hmm. so. We need to revoke. Well, you need to vote on which option to choose. I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. I, thought it was too, understood. I think it, was it makes a whole lot clearer. I, I think it was understood, but I don't know if I. I would make it a whole lot clearer to re redo that, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind. Voting. We've already voted, so I got to accept that vote down there. It's just the Thank you. We've already, she just got through taking that vote 13 to. We'll have the that uh, resolution 319.06 was passed as amended, but we need to amend it again. Well, somebody needs to clarify that you're voting on one of the options, so I would suggest that somebody make a motion to choose one one particular option and to get seconded and vote on that so you've Mr. got something in the record as to which option you intended to choose. Mr. Meadows, would you back under 3, 1906, would you make that motion to go with option one? To opt in on option one. I'll make that motion that we accept. And I'll second. Second by Commissioner Hester. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, call her one more time on this. Bill? Aye. Barry? Be sorry. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Ann? Yes. Henderson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13? Madam Clerk, Madam Clerk, I'd like to change my vote to yes. I'm sorry, you're back. I'd like to change my vote to yes. Okay. I thought you said I think I passed. You said passed. Oh, I, oh, we you had said you, passed. yes. Oh, did you? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's approved, but back to option one. So we're clear on that. Moving on to resolution 31907, resolution to allow the county executive's office to apply for a pre trial risk assessment pilot project grant that is available for the Justice Assistance Grant Program. So I have a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Hester, second by Commissioner Gann. Commissioner Hester? <coughs> Nothing coming. Commissioner Gann? Nothing coming. Any questions or comments? Mr. Wilson? Yeah, this is on that uh, the pilot program for, for the inmates, correct? Uh, would you yes. like to? Yeah, it, it, it is. That's correct. That, that is correct. This is the pre-trial risk assessment pilot project. Uh, this came to us uh, from the sheriff who had signatures from the DA, the public defender, it seemed like there was somebody else. Uh, so it, it's like we, we explained to the budget committee, there is a lot of money being um, invested in the judicial system in one way or the other trying to uh, reduce recidivism and trying to uh, maybe address part of our overcrowding in our facilities and this is a grant uh, that's coming from the, the judicial um, assistance grant from the um, judicial system. Mr. Wilson, anything else? No, I do have, I mean, uh, I guess I have a lot of questions of actually how this would work. And it, it's, I mean, it's just kind of vague uh, how this is uh, going to go. Uh, I'd like to defer to Chief Phillips if, if I could. 
Sure. Go ahead. I actually brought our director of programs too, in case I don't have any answers to some of the questions. But <clears throat> one of the things that we looked at um, whenever you have an overcrowding issue in the jail is what what's causing the overcrowding issue. You know, as of tonight, had 292 folks in jail. Uh, 75 of those are females. Uh, we have the capacity to hold 170 total people, and um, so we're about 122 over capacity. So when Jim Hart came in from CTAS and done his study, um, some of the things they look at is, is where, where are the issues? And um, we're, we're significantly higher in the pretrial release detainees at this particular time with uh, folks that are in jail that are there for misdemeanors and and lower end type um, crime. So CTAS actually sent an email out and um, provided this information in reference to a grant. So with what Director McNichol does in her programs and stuff, I, I forwarded that to her and had her work on that just because you know anything that we can do extra to get somebody out of jail to keep from housing them obviously is a benefit to the county and to the taxpayers, you know. Um, on an average, based on our, our annual budget, uh, if you're a healthy inmate, it's costing us about a thousand bucks a month to house you. Some people are there for pretty serious crimes, some people are there for not so serious crimes. So we're just looking at another way to try to cut down on the recidivism or, or cut down on um, the incarceration, whether it be through pretrial, probation, whatever we can do through uh, Director McNichols' programs because uh, what we're doing. It's just not working. I mean, we're we're we've been up to 345 people in jail, and it's 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 a problem. So, do they bond out? There, there's there's a process that they would go through, and essentially, there's a couple of ways that that would work. And there's a protocol that will be designed, and, and we'll be working if we're accepted for the grant. You guys vote for um, the county to continue in the process. We will actually work with the people, and there's a process that we go through. And, there's like a nine-step program to determine whether or not, not everybody's a candidate for it. Some people um, are just not for that program. Then um, it, it breaks it down to, it says the elements of effective pretrial system, uh, pretrial release and attempted decisions based on risk and designed to maximize release, court appearance and public safety. And this is number two, legal framework that includes presumption of at least uh, restrictive non-financial release, restrictive or prohibition on the use of secured financial conditions of release, and detention for limited and clearly defined type of defendant, release options following or in lieu of arrest. Uh, defendants eligible for uh, by statute for pretrial release are considered for release with no locally impo imposed exclusions not permitted by statute. Number five, experienced uh, prosecutors screen criminal cases before first appearance. Uh, number six, defense counsels um, active at first appearance. Uh, number seven, collaborative uh, group of stakeholders that employs evidence-based decision-making to ensure a high-functioning system. And number eight, dedicated pretrial service agency. So there's a lot that goes into it. They, they're, they're just not going to come into the jail and, and we're just going to pick and choose who gets released. There's an assessment that the, the people that are that's, that have the potential to be released, and that's not just made by me or, or by the director. There will be somebody that oversees at the public defender's office, the DA's office, the judges. They all have a play in this. It all um, we we just don't get to turn folks loose. Of all of the people you have in there now, how many would possibly be eligible for this program? We'd have to screen those people and go through what I just explained. I mean, at a guesstimate. I mean. I mean, that's an that's a, that's a guess. I mean, I, I could guess and say 40. I could say 50. But that's 40 or 50. You're not paying or paying to, to, to stay. You know, I think one thing. Um, this pilot program uh, is a thing that the state started, and Knox County is doing it. And we're nowhere near as big as Knox County, but we all through the state have an issue with overcrowding. And um, you know, every every jail around here, there's never been a jail that's uh, closed uh, cells down because they were. Uh, didn't have enough business. We all got more business, I think, than we can stand. So Knox County has, uh, they have 300 people on pretrial. They have 800 now. They're one of the uh, pilot folks for this program. And it seems to be working for them as far as some of the people that they're keeping out of jail versus in jail. So, you know, we're doing everything that we possibly can 
um, to cut that number down, whether it's through director's programs or whether it's through uh, the drug courts. Anything that we can do to keep somebody out of jail, that's, you know, we're trying to do that because <clears throat> as everybody heard, the, the CTAS done the presentation for um, the jail and, and, the, and the jail folks came in and, you know, the price they throw out there to build onto the jail is a, a number higher than I'm interested in see happen. But, you know, I'm a taxpayer too. I don't want to see no $30 million uh, add on to a jail. I don't want to see what it's going to cost to staff at jail. So I want to look at all the other additional programs that we can look at uh, to maybe cut that number down. Are we going to fix the overcrowding issue by uh, doing pre-trial? No. Can we help it? I think so. So, you know, if we don't try it, you never know, you know. So. Commissioner Wilson. I'm done. Thank Mr. Uh, Mr. Hendrickson first. Then Mr. Berry. The, the ones you're talking about now for this program, is that people that's in that for felonies? No, we're looking at pre-trial misdemeanors. We have, we have, there's different folks that are sentenced, you got, or not sentenced, there's pre-trial misdemeanors <coughs> and pre-trial felony folks. And uh, this, so, this, so is, this is specifically <coughs> misdemeanors. We got about, roughly about 100, approximately 100 misdemeanors. The other, other 40-ish that we've got, because about half our population is pre-trial. So the other 40-ish is probably the, the, the felonies and the stuff like that. But we're going to, this program is focusing um, on the misdemeanor folks. So, and me and me and you had several discussions, um, and I understand our magistrates are, you know, busting their hops or working around the clock, but we, we well, why, why ain't the rest of these people getting bonded out? Well, why ain't they giving a bond? Is, I mean, well, yeah. What, what, what's, the, what's the deal on that? Because if they're in there for a misdemeanor, they should be able to bond out, correct? Not everybody can bond out. Right? So that, that, you know, I don't know what the question you're asking, but, but essentially everybody gets arraigned. That's the process. You go for a judge or a magistrate to get arraigned anytime you get incarcerated, anytime that you're sit, uh, sit there be a minimus. That's what admits you to jail or some kind of warrant. Then you go before the judge or the magistrate. Uh, and some folks, um, do have bonds and there's very few folks that are held without bond until going to court but some of these people don't have the ability or whatever the process is you know there's a there's a number of reasons why they don't get out of jail so i mean uh, our mattresses are working you know through the night seeing people so they can bond out if possible that's true but this is totally the this program here is totally different from just going to see the magistrate and just bonding out this program is identifying people. Mr. Chairman, point of order, we've deviated from the original resolution of accepting the grant. Yeah, if we could take it back around to the grant. Let her rip, take a chip. Hmm. Where are we at, Mr. Barry? With, with with the grants that, that we've gotten, I mean, I, we've gotten several grants along the way with involving inmates and stuff. Is this is this going to be working in conjunction with with other grants, with other organizations, or is this is this one just going to through, through your office? This program is going to be applied for through the county executive's office. Jamie's done a lot of work with it, um, and this program is designed. Uh, specifically for the pretrial release. So are these the same folks that Ms. McNichol is working with now? A lot of them, I know she's got a lot of programs going internally now. Is this something that she will build off of or is this just pretrial, just strictly? Well, essentially this grant, you know, no, nobody has been designated to oversee the grant from what I understand. This is, we're just at the preliminary stages of, of applying for it. So we don't even know who's actually going to run the pretrial services, but whoever it is has to be connected with the courts. Yeah, and one clarification, uh, we are making application. Okay. We're pretty confident that we would be awarded this since we were made application, but this body, in most all cases, has to give us authority to even make the application. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say, we're asking to 
be able to apply for the grant, and if awarded it, we've set the budget up. Okay, and so one, if we're awarded the grant, then then does it come back here for us to? It does not. Okay, so that's one. So we need to we need to have some parameters on knowing what. That, that, that's what yeah, you know, the, the good question. I just want to make sure yeah, everybody yeah. knew that this does not, we're, we're not appropriating money yet, and we only are if we're awarded. But it just seems like we're getting a pocket of money here and a pocket of money there, and, and this pocket's being used and this pocket's being used, and, and we've got. If I may, there's been four pockets on this one. Okay. I think there's just a lot of investments going into the judicial system trying to solve a lot of our problems. Quite frankly, you can almost treat it as the federal government, but this is from the federal government is is almost throwing money trying to solve a problem. And they're pilots, so that means they are uh, experiments. They may work, they may not work. You may have one of them that works so successfully, the other one may go away after a couple of years. And it's simply interface with the ju judicial system. So I'm, I'm confident that if we get awarded the grant, the county, it's worth the grant. Whoever is put in charge of that, I think, I think will work with the public defender's office, the DA, the judge, yeah. the sheriff's yeah. office. Okay. That's good. Commissioner Meadows, right? This came before budget committee prior to Indeed. this, and there's no match from the hour right. and there's no obligation beyond the first three years. So, okay. We're going to try to vote on three nineteen oh seven. Madam Clerk, call roll. Bell. Yes. Barry. Yes. Bowers. Yes. For shares? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13 yes. 31907 is adopted. Resolution 31908, a resolution to amend the general fund 101, special purpose fund 121, fire general. Uh, debt service fund 151, judicial drug task force fund 357, and the district attorney general fund 364, where overages exist either by unexpected changes to departments or needs have changed since the first of the fiscal year. Motion by Commissioner Hooks. Second by Commissioner Mayor. Commissioner Hooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is just a cleanup resolution, and I would refer it to our county executive. Feel like but it's just a resolution. I'd be glad to make any uh, comments on this. Again, it is a cleanup resolution. Um, two of them are agency funds. Uh, one of them, some of this is just corrections we made. Uh, the first one of the general funds, we are consolidating uh, the property assessor's budget and the uh, that's the reappraisal budget in the room. We've, gone, we've done it both ways. Last year, if you recall, we did the same thing with s sessions and circuit courts. Since it was under the same elected official, we just started consolidating. Commissioner Hooks, anything else? Commissioner Meadows. Um, the only thing is that uh, just add that this was presented the budget committee and was uh, approved for submission here. Any other questions or comments? Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Shears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13 yes. Resolution 319 is adopted. Resolution 319 a resolution amending the general capital project fund 171-CHG courthouse and jail maintenance sub fund to account for additional funding for the administrative office of courts, court security grant program. Motion by Commissioner Meadows. Second by Commissioner Hooks. Commissioner Meadows. Uh, this is a grant to purchase a new x-ray machine that we use downstairs here at the courthouse. Commissioner Hooks. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Rashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 
Yes. Resolution 319-09 is adopted. Resolution 319-10, a resolution amending the general capital projects fund to allow the park and recreation department along with the health department to proceed with a multi-use trail master plan. Motion by Commissioner Berry, second by Commissioner Gaines. Commissioner Berry. No, this is a this is a grant that we're going to use to uh, try to do the, the master the master plan down at Rome County Park we that comes through a health department grant. Commissioner Gannon. Uh, I, I hope I'm not out of order to say this. I was at Rome County Park yesterday. Uh, it's one of uh, it's one of our greatest treasures in Rome County. Uh, talked to several individuals, several folks that moved from out of state. Uh, one family uh, was from Michigan. Uh, one family uh, moved up here from uh, Mississippi and uh, went to go see the new uh, exercise equipment that the parks has put in. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, folks is enjoying it. Kids are playing on the key, uh, playgrounds and a lot of the seniors was using the equipment and uh, probably we probably passed about 300 something dogs. And uh, it's one of our greatest treasures. And I took great pride in walking up to folks and asking them if they was enjoying our park. And everyone else said they did. So anything that we can do uh, to improve Roan County Park in that area it is a huge benefit for us. There's, there's so much there to offer uh, kids with the splash pads, the, the park, the fishing, the boating, uh, just the exercise, the equipment, the uh, shelters using, the cottage using. So anything that I think that this committee can do uh, to enhance that and further that is uh, it's just a, a, a benefit for Rome County. Any other questions or comments? That's it. Madam Clerk, call roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. For shares? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13, yes. Resolution 3, 19, 10 is adopted. Resolution 3, 1911, a resolution to amend the general capital project fund 171 by allocate the balance of the three year TVA grant awarded to the Rome County Office of Emergency Services. Motion by Commissioner Hooks, second by Commissioner White. Commissioner Hooks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a, uh, uh, a grant. It did come before the budget committee. The budget committee recommends adoption. Uh, this grant is for equipment of our. Office of Emergency Service Grant, and uh, we need the money. Commissioner White. Mr. Cook said no. Any other comments or questions? Madam Clerk, call roll, please. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Gann? Yes. Hendrickson? <coughs> yes. Hester? Yes. Hooks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13, yes. Resolution 319-11 adopted. Resolution 319-12, resolution to allow the county executive's office to apply for the victims of the Crime Act Grant Program, which is administered through the Office of Criminal Justice Program. Motion by Commissioner Hester, second by Commissioner Bowers. Commissioner Hester. No comment. Commissioner Bowers. Questions or comments from the commissioners? Madam Clerk, no. another one on the grants that you talked about earlier. Call the roll. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Bashir? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Ann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Folks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13, yes. Resolution 319 12 is adopted. Now moving on to Resolution 319 13, we waive the 12 day rule for uh, to urge the General Assembly to adopt equitable distribution of local sales tax revenues from out of state sellers. I have a motion by Commissioner Meadows, second by Commissioner Berry. Commissioner Meadows. That's just a motion to uh, get sales tax that was generated here back here. Sure. Commissioner Berry. Yeah, this, this is something that, uh, that Mayor Woody has has advocated and worked on for, for a couple of years and so we're finally just getting it 
getting it to where it needs to go. Any more questions or comments? Is this for uh, any like, online purchases or food trucks? It, this, this is for online purchase from out of the state vendor, not any state vendor, but out of the state. Any more questions? I'm Bart Paul. Bell? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Brashears? Yes. East? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Ann? Yes. Hendrickson? Yes. Hester? Yes. Folks? Yes. Meadows? Yes. White? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 13 yes. Resolution 319.13 is adopted. Right, right quick, I want to thank Carol. She's filled in for Ariel, and we really throw her in head first. And she's done an awesome job getting everything out and getting things real. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Perry? We, we probably could we just do a little moment of silence. Yes, that's what I'll get ready to do. As most of y'all know, uh, uh, Commissioner Goddard passed away this past week after a long, courageous battle with multiple sclerosis. And, uh, we, he was laid to rest yesterday, and he served in this body for 20 years. So if we could just observe a moment of silence for Commissioner Goddard. Commissioner Wilson. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed?